Hi guys, it's Mrs. Rowley. I'm back to read chapter three of Mr. Popper's Penguins by R Richard and Florence Atwater. So here we go, chapter three, Out of the Antarctic. Um, if you remember, uh, Mr. Popper had received, um, he was listening to the radio and he heard the people in the Antarctic, he heard them talking directly to him and they told him that there was a surprise coming. And we were trying to guess what that surprise might be and make predictions about that. Uh, remember as we're reading to circle or highlight any words you don't know and then look them up after we're done. And again, this book can be found on Epic and you guys all have your um, your memberships to Epic, um, your passwords and usernames, so make sure um, that you're reading along. Chapter 3, Out of the Antarctic. What with the excitement of having the great Admiral Drake speak to him over the radio and his curiosity about the Admiral's message to him, Mr. Popper did not sleep very well that night. He did not see how he could possibly wait to find out what the Admiral meant. When morning came, he was almost sorry that he had nowhere to go, no houses to paint, no rooms to paper. It would have helped to pass the time. Would you like the living room papered over? He asked Mrs. Popper. I have quite a lot of paper number 88 left over from the mayor's house. I would not, said Mrs. Poppers firmly. The paper on now is plenty good enough. I'm going to the first meeting of the Ladies' Aid and Missionary Society today, and I don't want any mess around to clean up when I get home. Very well, my love, said Mr. Popper meekly, and he settled down with his pipe, his globe, and his book of Antarctic adventures. But somehow, as he read today, he could not keep his mind on the printed words. His thoughts kept staying away to, straying away to Admiral Drake. What could he have meant by a surprise for Mr. Popper? Fortunately for his peace of mind, he did not have so very long to wait. That afternoon, while Mrs. Popper was still away at her meeting and Janie and Bill had not yet come home from school, there was a loud ring at the front door. Remember, Janie and Bill are Mr. and Mrs. Popper's kids. I suppose it is just the postman. I won't bother to answer it, he said to himself. The bell rang again, a little louder this time. Grumbling to himself, Mr. Popper went to the door. It was not the postman who stood there. It was an expressman with the largest box Mr. Popper had ever seen. Party by the name of Popper live here? That's me. Well, here's the package that come Air Express all the way from Antarctica. Some journey, I'll say. Mr. Popper signed the receipt and examined the box. It was covered all over with markings. Unpack it once, said one. Keep cool, said another. He stood, or he noticed that that box was punched here and there for air holes. Now let's think, if there were air holes, it said keep cool and open it once, what do you think might be in that box? We'll have to read on to find out. You can imagine that once he had the box inside the house, Mr. Popper lost no time in getting the screwdriver for by this time, of course, he had guessed that it was the surprise from Admiral Drake. He had succeeded in removing the outer boards and part of the packing, which was a layer of dry ice. When from the depths of the packing case, he suddenly heard a faint, oh! his heart stood still. Surely he had heard the sound before of the Drake Expedition movies. His hands were trembling so that he could scarcely lift off the last of the wrappings. There was not the slightest doubt about it. It was a penguin. Mr. Popper was speechless with delight, but the penguin was not speechless. Or it said again, and this time it held out its flippers and jumped over the packing debris. It was a stout little fellow about two and a half feet high. Although it was about the size of a small child, it looked much more like a little gentleman with its smooth white waistcoat in front and its long black tailcoat dragging a little behind. Its eyes were set in two white circles in its black head. It turned its head from one side to the other, as first with one eye and then with the other, it examined Mr. Popper. Mr. Popper had read that penguins are extremely curious, and he soon found that this was true. For stepping out, the visitor began to inspect the house. There's Mr. Popper and the penguin that he received, and here's the crate that it came in. You can see the air holes right there. You can see the wallpaper that Mr. Popper has hung in their house before, and that's Mr. Popper. Down the hall, it went into the bedrooms with its strange, pompous little strut. When it or he, Mr. Popper had already begun to think of it as a he, 
got to the bathroom, it looked around with a pleased expression on its face. Perhaps, thought Mr. Popper, all that white tiling reminds him of the ice and snow at the South Pole. Poor thing, maybe he's thirsty. Carefully, Mr. Popper began to fill the bathtub with cold water. This was a little difficult because the inquisitive bird kept reaching over and trying to bite the faucets with its sharp red beak. Finally, however, he succeeded in getting the tub all filled. Since the penguin kept looking over, Mr. Popper picked it up and dropped it in. The penguin seemed not to mind. Anyway, you're not shy, said Mr. Popper. I guess you've got sort of used to playing around with those explorers at the pole. When he thought the penguin had had enough of a bath, he drew out the stopper. He was just wondering what to do next when Janie and Bur Bill burst in from school. Papa, they shouted together at the bathroom door. What is it? It's a South Pole penguin sent to me by Admiral Drake. Look, said Bill, it's marching. The delighted penguin was indeed marching. With little pleased nods of his handsome black head, he was parading up and down the inside of the bathtub. Sometimes he seemed to be counting the steps it took. Six steps for the length, two steps for the width, six steps for the length again, and two more for the width. For such a big bird, he takes awfully small steps, said Bill. And look how his little black coat drags behind. It almost looks as if it were too big for him, said Janie. But the penguin was tired of marching. This time, when it got to the end of the tub, it decided to jump up the slippery curve. Then it turned and with outstretched flippers toboggan down on its white stomach. They could see that those flippers, which were black on the outside like the sleeves of a tailcoat, were white underneath. Goop, goop, said the penguin, trying its new game again and again. What's his name, Papa? asked Jamie. Goop, goop, said the penguin, sliding down once more on his glossy white stomach. It sounds something like Cook, said Mr. Popper. Why, that's it, of course. We'll call him Cook. Captain Cook. And that's the end of chapter three, so you'll have to come back next time for chapter four where we'll hear some more of Captain Cook's adventures um, in the Popper's house. So I hope you guys are doing well. We hope to see you soon. Um, take care, and we'll see you next time.